Hi. I'm going to have a go at a, a, another Lakeland type of scene, water with some hills, fairly low horizon. And when you do this, that sort of design, you need to make a bit of a feature of the sky because there's so much of it. So um, I'll show you my palette. I've just taken it out of the Ziploc bag and it's lovely and moist from two days ago. So we've got lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber and Payne's grey. Oh, with my ape colour, the burnt sienna, which I like. The Fabriano, this is the Fabriano that I bought from Curtis Ward. I see that it's gone up about three or four pounds a pack of 50 since I bought this, so uh, I was lucky. So check your prices, I'll discount and Grantham's do it as well. They do packs of 100. So I hope it looks the same, so I hope it is. It's supposed to be 280 grams or 130 pounds, uh, cold pressed. Uh, it's a great paper for wetting wet, I have to say. It mostly behaves itself, even if the brush doesn't. So I'm using the the troublesome two inch hay because I know some of you struggle with using it and probably have thrown it out the window by now. But you do have to persevere and learn all your idiosyncrasies with this particular brush. It does an awful lot, but you might not want to paint quick and impression like that. You might want to take your time. Masterpieces do take longer. Right, I'll, as that expands, I'll reclip it a little bit. Just to give us a start, and then I'll just go into the sky. I'll. Uh, so when I say complicated sky, I don't mean a difficult complicated sky. I mean quite a bit going on. So I'll put in a bit of red, a bit of yellow, dirty yellow. Clean. Half. So I'm more of an, an orangey sort of colour so nice and warm bit of realism. Now the, the brush is split so it's going a bit streaky. So a bit of blue. Nice and loose paint. Right, okay. The, my, my palette is, my, my board is, is at about, oh, about 75 degrees, I would think. It's pretty uh, steep but not as steep as it has been. So I'll put in a bit of, bit of cloud now, a bit of light red and ultramarine. So we've got all these different elements now. We've got light in the sky, we've got a bit of blue showing through, and we've got some cloud shadow. So that, to my mind, for wet and wet anyway, is a, a complicated sky. So just darken the foreground a bit to reflect what's going on above it. Okay, so that that's all I want to do with that. We'll see how that pans out. I, I went in search of more Ziploc bags, Wilkinson's, but they didn't have any. A nice woman in W. H. Smith said they do, but they didn't. Didn't have any when I went yesterday. So I went online. Right, the one that I was given is old, and my friend gave it to me. It's a really good quality one originally, but it's getting a little bit holy around the crease. So I went well, my weekly shop to Asda yesterday. I had I, I didn't have the size of my palette with me, but I bought this A4 Ziploc zipper wallet. Uh, it was only 55p, very good price. Unfortunately, it didn't fit my tray. It's just too small. So I've gone online and I've ordered a pack of five for five pounds, including postage, which I look pretty good. So I look forward to receiving them. And I've got two palettes like this, one with, for the limited um, colours and one for the, all the full, full range of eight colours. 
Right, I reckon we can put in a bit of distance now. So if you do the sky colours, but we want a bit, bit of strength in it really. So we've got about as high as, high as that. Okay, that'll do for our for our distance. Now we'll put in a bit of greeny colour, a bit of burnt sienna, a uh, raw sienna, shall I say, and a bit of uh, blue. Let's see if that merge a bit better than it has been. And I'll put some trees on that line. It's a very simple painting. But I've just done several uh, rocky ones, rocky gorges. I love doing those. Persevere with the plastic card. It's not as difficult as it looks. It's just a bit. It's just practice. I know you think I've got. Some of you think I've got some sort of magic in my fingertips, but I haven't. It's just that I've done a lot of it, and you have to do a lot. It's, this just doesn't come easy, for most of us anyway. Now I'll put some trees in here. Try to preserve the. Oops. You need the the paint to be tube consistency, which this more or less is. Now it's got lots of water on it, and it, well, softening in it. No, if you if you don't if you don't use the paint thickly or on on the wet in wet, it just disappears into the background into the general weaker colour. So just a bit here and there, a bit more burnt sienna in there. You see it more or less stays solid. This is a compromise between painting dry as it as I was doing until Maria told me how to do this. Some wonderful painters, Maria Kellner. Have a look at her stuff on YouTube. She's a truly great watercolour painter. But we all do different things. I like fast, impressionist, get it down and done. I like to have fun with the paint, but if I can get this out of my system in half an hour, that does me. Other people want to spend a lot of time on it, and that's fine as well. It's a sort of personality thing, I think. It's why I like looking at Steve, Stephen Cronin's stuff. It's immediate, fresh. For better or for worse, it goes in, and it goes in quickly. And get on with the next one. But there's another wonderful thing about painting that there's something for everybody. We can do our paint, we can do what we want with it. Right, let's let's have a bit of a bit of a slope in there. Let's. Oh, well that's good, another, another dimension to that, that distance and I'm putting in some nice neat raw sienna there. We can, that'd be our beach, we can put some burnt, burnt umber as well. Burnt umber is the one that dries, it always is the fastest drying colour on the palette with uh, oil and acrylic, well especially oil. But it, it's... You can use it much watered down, it makes a lovely beach colour. So I'm just going to go with some beaches, beachy sort of stuff here. You need to keep your hake dead, chisel edged.
Okay, so that that's uh, that's a bit of an impression there, isn't it? We can lift out sails and things against that darker background. So we cut the paper and start to concentrate on the foreground. Right, swig of tea. I quite like that. That's looking quite good. The sky is drying out quite nicely. You can risk it going over this when it's dry with clouds or a bit of dry brush, but I think it's a bit of a risk. Try to get it in one go at the beginning. That is not quite strong enough, but you never know quite how it's going to, 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 to turn out. So let's put in a very colourful bit of beach, so a bit of burn umber, a bit of raw in it. Pull out the hairs. dark. I want water to, the, to show in this. Oh, we want some nice warmer colours in here. Burnt sienna, raw sienna, bit of, bit of grey. You could do a bit of dry brush on this if you wish. It's your imagination, but try to create an impression of warmth and detail just by using a few few brush strokes. Then when it dries up, you can push up to show some grasses. Just flick it up. We'll come over from the other side as well. So. And I'll put in some some grasses in a moment with, with, with the rigger. And it's got a bit darker in here, a bit of red in there with a the blue. Nice lot of colour. We can put in some green too. And I'm going to lift some of this out in a moment. Let's get some lighter beach across here. Little marshes. Right, now with the card, we can put in just a few little bits of rocky shore. Not a lot, but just, just a bit. Well, that's, uh, that's about it. Right, now we're going to bring it all together now. So um, with a rigger, uh, we've got two, it's the larger one I want, that one, a swig of tea. We've got to put some detail in now. To turn this into a picture, but I'm just wondering if I could put another island in here somewhere. Let's go for it, let's put a bit of an island in over, over there. Uh, so I want it quite light. So a bit of burnt umber and a bit of sienna. Let's right, a bit, bit of dark now.
bit of blue. I can put a tree sticking out of that. And when I put in the reflections, Okay, so I've put that glue there just to take it back a bit, just to give a bit of aerial perspective to that. Uh, we've got, we can put a couple of boats, uh, uh, an anchor here and there, which we're all now. Let's get in some dark greeny colour, grey yellow and just Green glasses in. And what you put above, put below, and it just gives an impression of water. It just says water. Bit of shadow there. Look, just just little bits of interest. Breaking up flat surfaces, making points of interest. It's nothing really. Okay. So, so we'll have a bit of bit of a blue boat there. I think. Oh, let's put a boat in. Just something like that. I've got to do some reflections and a bit or a bit of dry brush on here to reflect that that nice red there. But I'll let I'll just um, let that dry a bit. Let's put a boat in here. Okay. Uh, right, I'll put in a bit of a, a tree there now. So I want a bluish umbery foliage. Uh, let's just get a bit darker than that. Right, that, that should do, it's a bit darker there. I'm trying to pick up the sky colours, but I'm using a bit of burnt umber in there just to... Well, I need to, I've got to anchor that a bit, so it's just a bit dark. to put in a bit of a darker underneath that tree there 
bit of foliage, bit of greeny. Now you've got to make sure your, your brush yeah, isn't hiding a lot of water. So why you need a lot of cloth standing by. A bit darker there. Well, right, that, that that that's fine. Save my brush. Right. Uh, figures. Oh, I'll do those later. I'll give this a dry. So take your headphones off, and I'll just dry this off. Put some reflections in. Dry it again. Then we can go back and finish the detail. Okay, now I don't want to put the reflection of that in this water as a reflection so much as, as a bit of dry brush. Um, now dry brush is always a bit fraught. So let's just gently put the reflection in that way. Bit of yellow. And a bit darker okay that, that's about about it really uh, ah easier said than done right let's just soften that a bit okay just to soften a little bit here. Yeah, I'm not happy with that. Well, I tried to get that straight. Um, well, it's nearly straight. Right, okay, let's put a bit, bit of red in. Might be overdoing that. I think it was better before I left it, before I mucked about with it, wasn't it? Okay, well we've got we've got a bit of that reflected colour coming into the still water. I will put a bit of a reflection on that, I think. Right, now some detail in here.
Right, okay, so that, let's put something there. Um, the boat probably is a bit, see if we can make it just a little bit bigger. So let's put a little figure in. Right, that gives a bit of scale, it's probably a bit small. But I want to give a, an impression of depth, maybe he's too small because taking that to there would be too tiny for that, so we can make him bigger. Bit of tissue and a flat brush. So it could get it nice and wet the brush. Then squeeze out most of the water. So here we'll just scrape out some sails. Okay, so that's that's okay. So I don't reckon that's too bad. Right, okay. Uh, some nice birds. Sign it. Put a signature. There on. Put it in the mount, in the blue mount, and see what we've got. Yeah, we, we've lost it there a bit. I might sandpaper that. Let's see if we can. Yeah, that's quite a, quite a nice little picture. Uh, I'll get my bit of sandpaper. And to see if I can just dry brush some of that out there. I'm going to get some fine, slightly fine, this is really, really coarse. Okay, right, mount, make sure the horizon is level. Horizontal. So there we are, we've got a nice little, well, I think it's quite a nice little picture. There's foreground, middle distance, further middle distance, and distance, and a sky. So we've got all those different planes. I haven't overloaded the foreground other than put that boat in and the little figure. Uh, that mooring rope I should have taken a bit more care with. But, uh, but there we are. So that uh, scraping out, often it's got to be bone dry to do that. And we've got a, a bit of a landscape, a bit of a hill there, and some trees. So I, I don't think that's, a, well, that's too bad. Let's uh, bring you round and we'll have a, have a little look. 
see what I've done. Um, zoom in. Right, there's my background. Okay, so that's all I've done for that. You can see that the yacht sails on the horizon, and that was my island coming in, or a beach. But it looks a bit Lake District, district y. So there is a little figure and some rocks on the shore, some grass showing through, some marsh grass coming across to a bit more shore there. And the, the blue reflecting the sky above. Okay, let's zoom you out and then I'll bid you farewell till maybe later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.